Hey mate. Oh, good eh? Oh, how you doing? Oh, good. I'm so glad to see you. Yeah. This wasn't scripted. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Alright. I'm hungry. Seatbelts on. Yeah, seatbelts on. So, you know, what, what's the plan? What are we talking about today, I mean? I've got a few things on my mind. Yeah? We have uh, a few characters that are going around today. Yep. The likes of Andrew Tate. Uh, we have some touchy uh, topics. We have China and Taiwan. A bit of abortion. That's always a bit fun, isn't it? Do you have Braden Barr? It's uh, a touchy topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm hungry. Alright. Let's, wait, 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 let's go Hungry Jacks. Alright. Take me to Hungry Jacks. Lower myself. Who's this dickhead in front of us? Honestly. People who drive Lancers are really weird. <laughs> I agree, man. I've honestly never met a good bloke who drives a Lancer. Mm. Audio listeners, if you drive a Lancer, It's, I would just upload it. This is like a draft. <laughs> All right. Oh, easy on the corners, mate. <laughs> we should, we should. <laughs> what do you know about Andrew Tate? Not enough. He's so, um. Well, I mean, he's only really made a. Like, he's always been a, a figure in like sport and stuff, but he's only really made a name for himself in social media in the past couple months, I'd say. Yeah. Especially on TikTok and. You know, it's really, it's hard, it's hard to know much about him because he's, even though he's so out there, it's like really hard to find his, things about his personal life. Yeah. What, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think he has, he has a lot of views. Mm-hmm. Um, Not much common sense. Some much more drastic and questionable than others, but yep. when it comes to him talking on men in society mm -hmm. and discipline um i quite agree with some of that but really? his views on women uh they yeah. have a no-no in my books no uh would not i would not recommend um selling women for prostitution no yeah. or hitting them with belts no something. no that's probably not a good not a good idea either but i think if you're the four-time world kickboxing champion you can do whatever <laughs> that's, that's a good point that's true too so let's I have some facts about Andrew Tate. Oh yeah. Did you know his dad was a was a master at chess? Really? Mm. I didn't know that. You hear him quite a lot in his videos go on about how his dad being a chess master <laughs> has affected him and he kind of compares the whole thing of life to chess. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well. Oh, looks like we're here. Look at that. Perfect what, timing for food. What were, What are you thinking, Obi? I imagine you're a pain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like... Hmm. Oh, let's get a, uh, a... A Roadhouse Jack's Fried Chicken with... A Diet Coke. Yeah. And medium chips. Hey, can I just get a uh, Hungry Jack's Roadhouse Fried Chicken with... Sorry, what burger are we after? Uh, Roadhouse Fried Chicken. Yeah, with the in and out? Um, yes please, a medium. With the large with the Coke? Yes please. Medium, no, medium Coke, sorry. Medium Coke. No worries, anything else? Uh, a chocolate shake and a medium chips please. Was it a medium chocolate shake? Yes please. No worries, anything else? Yeah, medium chips. Alright, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mate, easy on the accelerator. What a twat. <laughs> Fucking hate public servants. Honestly. But you have... Don't he's you. got cash. I do have cash, but I'm playing with card today. Oh, yeah? That's always good. Yeah. You're pretty, you're pretty drive through I know the viewers can't see, but you know, new, new store. Yeah, we got a new Hungry Jacks around the corner. Um, from my house, where I just got picked up. <laughs> Um, no, thank you. This Lance was still in front of us. I know. Oh my gosh. You, you know they're dickhead when they got stickers on the back. When they have stickers. Yeah. And they have a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. 
they, you know. Honestly, the chances of seeing a Lancer driver that are actually a good bloke, I like the chances of seeing a Pajero driver that doesn't go 20 k under the speed limit. You've got a good point. Or people who drive uh, Foresters. I, I actually like you people. Like? I like people who drive Subaru Foresters. Yeah? Yeah. No, I've been thinking about getting a twin turbo. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But, but it'd be more a track thing, not a, not an actual. Ah, I mean you got drive. the four wheel drive, the all wheel drive. I do. You've got the the race car skill. Mhm, mm that's right. What else? You just it, you just need more power. Yeah. If the viewers don't know, I'm actually I actually got the top ten time in um South in, Australian in, race car in uh, South go Australian go karting. So at Tail and Bend. So you know I'm I'm actually pretty pro. He's up there. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you want to go to eat, Obi? Let's eat on the road. Alright. For a little bit, good. let me let me eat my stuff and then we'll find a place. To pull up. Near the beach, near the ocean. Mm. That'll be nice. Decent. While we're waiting. Have you got a book of the week? Oh, let me tell you. Oh my I sure gosh. Do. Actually brought it with us today. Good. Investing in clocks and watches. Yep. By come whale, <laughs> come hail. So tell me, why is this your chosen book of the day? Well, I was just thinking, what what could be a good first book of the week? And I thought, I thought something I'm interested in and something that means a lot to me. Yeah. So I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go with the thing that interests me most: antiques, collecting. And I had a book on clocks and watches that, you know, I hadn't brought out in a while. So I thought it'd be a good discussion point. It's quite interesting. So, what makes a clock a good clock? Uh, there's actually many things. So, like back when clocks were first introduced, they didn't actually have a minute hand, only oh an hour God. and a second hand, which is, you know. So, what's the second hand if there's an hour and a. <laughs> Continuing on. <laughs> um, right. You know, there's like the, the specific clock makers mm -hmm. in antique clocks that, you know, they have more credentials than others and there's more con there's countries that have better quality clocks so mm. the in say america and stuff all the clocks the antique clocks from like mid 20th century oh, that's yeah. where that's how far you go back normally they're like they're good and they can be very pretty but they're cheaply sourced and mm. and like the artwork on it isn't like it's not as pristine. embellished and pristine as others so the best clocks you can buy are pretty much the ones that you want 19th or 18th century, mm -hmm. German or France. European mm. clocks are like the real deal when you're as a collector, you know? Yeah. So. A lot of great artists also came from Europe. Yeah. yeah. Have you got many clocks? I've, I've, I'm trying, I'm starting a collection, but you know, when you're in school, it's hard to, mm. It's hard to have the money to really support it because some of the clocks are like a one thousand, two thousand dollars. You know. What's so, the most expensive clock you own? The most expensive clock I own. Oh, just give us a oh. Thank you. Cheers, love. Oh, look at that. Lancer driver doing. <laughs> oh. Um, I actually have a few expensive. Well, I, the clocks that I have are expensive clocks. Yeah. So, and I have actually been gifted both gifted both of them, mm -hmm. which you know I'm quite lucky in that respect. Yeah. So my. When my Papa Don passed away a few years ago now, he he gifted me a mm, I think it was an early 20th century. Mm -hmm. It's French made, but it's an English like it's an it's an English clock, but it's made in France. Did he have a big clock? He does. He but I don't have that one. He has a grandfather clock from the, the 18th century. Ah, oh. and. Uh, a grandfather clock is something that I'm not focused on getting right now. Yep. It's more something that I'd like, I would like to get. Mm -hmm. But when you, but something that you need as a staple piece in a house. Mm -hmm. not, it's not really a, 
for like so you can cake around to place to place and stuff. So I need to settle down first before I think about getting any big any grandfathers. Yeah, any yeah. grandfathers. Keep keep them out of the house until you settle. That's right. I agree. <laughs> uh, Thank you for bringing uh, your book in. That's been book of the week. Yeah. Be my book next week. Yeah, we will. I'll bring in a very interesting book that I'll find. <laughs> And I'd like to move on to another segment, okay. another thing of the week. I've done some research, and have you ever heard of the corpse plant? No. Well, that is our plant of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this plant is a very stinky plant. It's, stinky it's one plant. of the worst smelling natural things in the world, except your mum. Except my mum. Wow, that, that might, might seem pretty bad then. Yeah. So tell me a bit about this plant. This plant actually takes seven to nine years to bloom. Seven to nine years to bloom? Yeah. What's, what's its growing rate? Do you know that or not? I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Give way. <laughs> you could have just been here by a car at full speed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ignoring the fact. Oh, that, I am picking the driver. <laughs> you know. Oh. The, the scientific name for the corpse part. Hello. Sorry. Fuck. The scientific name for the corpse point is Titan Arum. <laughs> Titan. Yes. It's a flowering plant in the family Arachidae. I don't know how you pronounce that. It has the largest unbranched inflorescence in the world. Really? Really. And the reason I chose this to be plant of the week is because it's so damn stinky. Yes, that's, that's actually... That's, that seems like a... An ad adequate reason. Since the name corpse plant is supposed to smell like a dead body. Right. Now my question here is, the people who named it know what dead body smell like. <laughs> That's actually a good point, hey. Yeah. Have you ever smelled a dead body? No, I haven't. Have you ever seen a dead body? No, I haven't. I don't know if you can hear audio listeners, but we have wonderful <laughs> weather here in South Australia. Beautiful sun, no clouds. And definitely no rain. There is no rain. Absolutely zero spots. I rain. think it means that we might have to talk a bit louder. Yeah, probably. Because it is fucking pissing now. <laughs> That's my plan of the week. Very interesting. Cooked plan. I'm, I'm, You're interested in plants? You like plant stack? You see, the thing is, like, you know, I do like plants, but I've never really invested time into, like, learning different plants' names. Yeah. And things like that, you know? So, I can't say I'm a, I'm a massive plant person. No. Oh. Well, you need plants to live, my friend. You do. That is true. Uh, yeah. I'll choose a plant of the week next week. So I, agree. I'll, I will be doing my research. Mm. Our next topic, our next segment, is called Animal vs. Animal. Right. Now tell me, who do you think we're going to play? A silverback gorilla or a grizzly bear? Now I want you to make your mind up now and then I'll give you some stats. And then you can tell me what you're, what you think after. Okay, if we're being if we're being fucking real here, it's it, it's it's gonna be a grizzly bear. But uh, I, I will, I'm not finished yet. I will say that for 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 content, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say the silverback gorilla. Now, why do you? Th how would a silverback gorilla beat a grizzly bear? Well, it's it's got. I just feel, I don't think a, a gorilla has the benefit of being able to run faster and it's more agile as well as having opposable thumbs. Thumbs which are means a big thing. It can hold things properly. 
Are and we oh are we saying the gorilla has a weapon? Yeah. Have you seen the new film Godzilla vs Kong? No. The big point of it is that there's an ancient artifact that Kong actually wields. So. Uh, this this is, might be something to speculate. We'll come back to that later if the, the monkey can have a weapon. <laughs> um, so thumbs and agility you think will take down the Bruce Lee Bear. Yes. Now I'm going to give you some stats, alright? I'm going to give you some some stats on the Grizzly Bear in the... Okay. So the Grizzly Bear has a 300 kilogram bite force. Really? Or a thousand psi. Mm hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's quite a lot of pressure. That's, that's it. That is actually. That could crush your arm pretty easily. Its max deadlift. Its <laughs> <laughs> its ma max lift um, is an. It could easily lift four hundred kilos. And that's not even close to how much you can lift, is it? Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> but he still wouldn't be able to pick up your mother. Oh, no. No, he probably wouldn't. <laughs> no. The average bear is seven foot tall. Yeah. Standing up. It has 20 inch hands. 20 inches. 20 inches. Imagine my penis in those hands. <laughs> Barely be able to see it. It has thick hide. Thick fur and thick muscles, mm -hmm. so it's going to be very hard to choke or, or penetrate deal, or, or penetrate deal damage to. The gorilla stats. Okay. So due to the gorilla having thumbs and different joints to a bear and the way they act, it can, it can actually lift more than the bear. Really? Up to 900 kilos, apparently. Far out. It's. How much? Do you know how much they weigh? Uh, well, the heaviest gorilla ever weighed was 215 kilos. Right. And the heaviest bear ever weighed was 750 kilos. Right. That's a three and a half to one. That's three and a half times bigger. Hmm. And weight's a big thing in fighting. Look at that Maserati. Wow. I wow. I was keeping my eyes on the road. <laughs> Anyway, continue with some gorilla stats. Yes. Um, the tallest gorilla ever me measured was six foot five, and the tallest bear ever measured was nine foot tall. So you put these stats against each other, and the gorilla smaller mm -hmm. doesn't have claws. No. And weighs almost four times less as much. Do you know the average bear IQ for the average gorilla IQ? Um, has your mom taken an IQ test because that would sort out the gorilla one? No, no she hasn't, thank you. Um, I, I'm not sure. I don't think they, they know how to take an IQ test. No, probably not. Alright, so after hearing that, do you think the gorilla still has it? <laughs> you know, Be honest with me. I think you, you can make a case for both animals. But when you're being realistic, and when it comes down to the straight facts, it's it's always in a fight. It's always going to be power, and the bear just has so much more power mm -hmm. than the gorilla. And if the gorilla cannot find somewhere where the bear can't reach it, or is in a like enclosed space, then I don't think the gorilla has a chance. Gorillas have nine foot long arms. They have a nine foot wingspan. Whether this comes, whether the gorilla knows Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they can find the nice. back yep. of the um, the bear and put it in a, a rear naked choke. Then we might see some. That's actually yeah, you make a decent point there. Actually. But I don't think I don't think many wild gorillas are familiar with the, the martial art. No. Um, so you think the grizzly bear will win? I agree with you. Now, let's put a weapon in the in, in the gorilla's head. Okay, what what weapon are we going for? Let's 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 look at a few weapons. Number one, sword. A good firm sword made by the the finest blacksmith in the in the 1300s. Okay. Won't break. 
Do you think this does anything? Yes. I think the stabbing motion forward will work, but I don't think you'll actually be able to really cut. Oh, wait, no. Because a gorilla has a punch force of 200 kilos, mm -hmm. and you combine that with sharp steel. Yeah. Might do some slicing. I guess you also have to think about the penetra penetrative range of a bear's skin. Mm -hmm. Because, say the gorilla can cut, I don't know how effective the cuts are going to be, or whether they're just, they're actually deep wounds, or whether they're, they're going, just... It's, it's going to immobilize the bear no. in any way. But the stabbing motion, yeah, that could that could have um, oh. an effect, I think. What about slices to the, to the face? Slices to the face is always a dangerous, like, that's, mm. that's I think what you don't want. this actually almost makes it fair, because... Mm -hmm. Bears have five swords in each hand. Okay. Yeah, they bloody well. Maybe not as long as a gorilla sword might be, mm -hmm. but be cool. Be cool if someone could animate that. Some, you know. Yeah. All right. Next, let's let's. What about? What's another weapon? An M16, An M16 A4 in the gorilla's hands. Does the gorilla know how to use it properly, or will he use it like the a gorilla battery? has to figure out how to use it in the time it has against the, uh, the bear? Do you think? No. I what don't about think... what? What animal would you give? What animal do you think has the best chance of solving how to fire a gun? I think a chimp. I'd say a human. Human who's never seen a gun before would have the best chance. Because what about a cave? No, what about a um, caveman? Let's uh, let, let's go. Yeah, prehistoric. You I think, still think a caveman would be able to figure it out. Small fingers. That's why I think a chimp. I guess you have to. There's only a few animals that can even hold a gun. Mm -hmm. Only pro only only animals in a primate family can actually pick up a gun. Yeah. And hold it, so it gives you a pretty limited option, I guess. Anyway, All right. Say say it was a bloody, you know, fucking I don't know. What's a big? I say an elephant versus a grizzly bear. You'd go an elephant wins. You know? Elephants. What do you reckon? The top of the battle, right? Nothing can be a hippo. Wait, do you think an elephant beats a hippo? I. Th Mm, I'm, no, no, no. Unless, depends, if you had like a group of elephants onto a group of hippos, the elephants mm. would win, but a singular one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not sure that the elephant would be able to take out a hippo. We've actually moved on to uh, week three's Animal Fight of the oh. Week, which is a number of hippos, or one hippo, versus a number, one elephant, or a number of elephants. Mm. Would you look at that? Yeah, well, we won't go too deep in the discussion because we'll leave that for another week. Leave that for another week. But pretty much, I don't think you're going to be able to give a gorilla a sword or a gun. No. So I think the grizzly bear wins. I think I, I think yeah. After those facts, I think the grizzly bear probably probably wins. Probably takes it takes it home. All right. Let's move on to our our next next one. Abortion. Abortion. This is, this is a controversial. You one. better watch this if we want this to do well. You better watch your words. Let me yeah. give you the the definition of abortion first. Oh, what a lovely view! What a lovely place to eat. Yeah. All right. Here is your. I already drank my coke. Brilliant. Thanks, champion. Never had a chocolate shake from... Chocolate Andrew shake your beauty? <laughs> the definition of abortion. The deliberate termination of human pregnancy. Hmm. Most often performed during the first 28 weeks of pregnancy. Uh, an object or undertaking that is unpleasant or badly made or carried out. So the first one. What do you think of it? Would, would you recommend abortion to our viewers here? Well, 
I guess you've got to question the ethicality of it, mm -hmm. as well as the legality, because... Thank you. There you go, champion. Because I guess, you know, I stand for abortion. Um, I think that abortion is okay because you have to be financially responsible for a child. Mm -hmm. And you have to ensure yourself that you're emotionally responsible for that child. Mm -hmm. And if you, you cannot meet those standards, then the best thing for you and your baby is to get an abortion. Yeah. And I think it's your choice whether you want to be a parent or not. But in saying that, you also have to fucking wrap your willy. If you want. <laughs> yeah. If you like, you can't be like stupid about like. So, say you have five abortions in five years, you kind of. Fucking, Something's wrong. Yeah. Have you ever had a um, pregnancy scare with your girlfriend? No. No. We don't have sex. No. Oh, I. I it's always something that happens. I think it takes a little bit too long for a, my girlfriend's period, and mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, would you, if your girlfriend were to get pregnant right now, would you get an abortion? If she got pregnant right now, I wonder who did it. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Um, I, We've talked about it, if in case it does happen. Mm -hmm. And I hope... That we would get an abortion. Because I would not to want to bring a child into this world that is disadvantaged in any way, whether that's having teen parents mm -hmm. or moving around to many households. Yeah. I want to live. I want to travel. Yeah. Um, at, at, sorry. At some point, is, is the baby too far developed to have an abortion? Like, what about, have you ever seen those 600 pound women that get pregnant and don't realize it? Mm. Right? What was if they realize way too late and then want to get an abortion? Well, they can't, but I imagine you just put a bit of toxic gas up there and the baby <laughs> dies and then you just have to wait for it to, you know, dribble out, degrade and <laughs> compost. <laughs> 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 and then. Eventually, comes out with the rest of the Hungry Jacks and McDonald's and KFC mm -hmm. that that lady eats. Well, do you, what? How old were you when you had your first memory? I'd say four or three. Mhm. Mm yeah. So the question comes into it: If you were aborted as a baby, still living inside your mum's womb. You're not even going to remember it, are you? Cause what if you might? When was your first memory? Probably two. What do you mean, probably? What was, what was it? Hmm. It doesn't help me if it's something inappropriate. Um, well, definitely not anything to do with my uncles or anything oh, like that. But, um, good on you. No, it was, I think my first memory probably would have been at my house in... Goldwood, the first house, not the one we saw yesterday, there was yep. another one. Easter. I would have been just turned two, two and a half maybe. Mm hmm. No, just turned two. And Slowly gaining conscious. And I remember waking up, running down the the stairs. This we had steps into that led into a small backyard. Mm -hmm. There was a big tree in the middle of the backyard. And in the tree, you know, the V of the tree, mm -hmm. it branches out. It was a big Easter bunny, and that is my first memory. Hmm, it's quite interesting. The one that I can think of is because other ones are blurry, and I'm not sure if they're actually real. Yeah. Um, but I definitely have one when I was in kindergarten, one of my first days. Mm -hmm. and I met one of my friends back in Scotland, and I was playing with Play-Doh and cranes on a little sand pit. He walks in and I ask him to be my friend. Hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know. That's kind of wholesome, isn't it? That's quite wholesome. It's quite nice, yeah. So, your memory doesn't really properly form until you're about four or five years old, you know? So, does that mean it's okay to, to murder and brutally, you know, terminate someone, a kid who's one or two years old? Because that's 
It's your argument. I change my argument. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until the ba if the, your baby's born, it's in the world. It's a living, breathing thing that has been come out of you and is independent for its own life. Mm -hmm. You cannot fucking murder that baby. You can. Well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's against my recommendation. And the law. And the law. Yep. Yeah. However, if you like, if you uh, if you cannot support your baby, and it is. Un and it is still inside of you, and it's unlikely that it's either going to have me mega disabilities, <laughs> mega disabilities, <laughs> or it's it's just not going to work for you. Then yes, I think it's okay. All right. On the topic of uh, abortions and birth and and everything, what's your uh, what's what's your opinion on? That? Genetically choosing children, like modifying them. I think it's wrong, and I don't think it should ever have been a thing that can happen, and I don't think it should. So if you had the choice to, if you had a baby that was going to have Down syndrome, would you push a button that put something in there and got rid of it? I guess you can... There's so, there's so many different types. There's so many arguments you can make for it. Mm -hmm. But and, and when it comes to babies that have potential disabilities, mm -hmm. if they, if they do. It does come under a different category. Mm -hmm. So I think that if you're gonna be realistic, if your baby is going to be a healthy baby, and the doctors have stated that, and you've mm -hmm. had scans. And you you just want to choose the baby's gender or its personality for you? That is wrong. Mm. What do you think? I agree with you. I think if you start to choose it for your own benefits, um, then it becomes more of a toy. I feel like. Yeah, it's something. That, it's not part of the process. No, and as well as choosing your own, it's not going to be special anymore to have a kid who's extremely intelligent or extremely mm. talented you know and, and although you go that's a horrible thing to say right because every mm. kid's talented at something there uh, there are super there are people that are just better and that's why it's something than other people mm. than other people so and if every single person's like that it really reduces the genetics and the and the talents of, of everyone. I think it also reflects a lot on you as a parent, how your kid grows up. Yeah. Because you can obviously raise it how you want, but and you, can you can't push a few buttons no. and then it's going to have the biggest tits when it's about 14 <laughs> years old. <laughs> no, not that... Not no matter that, how much you would love that. No, uh, yeah, no, not that we look at tits of 14 year olds. Like and our daughters. No, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I just yeah, it's not. You know, you're not gonna fucking modify your baby to be a bloody porn star, are you? No. <laughs> no, of no, course not. And I just don't think it's right to be able to change the way your baby is or is going to be as a person for your benefit as a parent. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Would you, would you like to start driving? Sure. Do you reckon we, we head off on the road again? You finish your food and your your chocolate poop milkshake? That's right. I sure have. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Well, this burger was quite nice. What was it? Good. Good. Right. Hmm. I was going to say, I think... Waiting if, for pairing. If your mum and dad could go back... <laughs> <laughs> to when you were in the womb, <laughs> they would genetically modify you, <laughs> so you. Uh, yep. So they, they would just yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that. Thanks. Thanks, Avi. All right. <laughs> There's always love. There's always love. That's right. We have done some discussion. On the name of this podcast, 
And yeah. the name we, we think suits us <laughs> and, the, and the topics we cover mm -hmm. pretty well is skid marks. Okay. Now, you as the viewers, if you're watching this, which you won't be. Cause no, because we, we don't have any. We don't have any. Um, if you think there's any other names, we're always open to, to suggestions or alter, um, to alter the name, but I think skid marks. Is I think wrong. skid marks is good. Yeah. It's funny, we're in a car, cars do skids. Mm -hmm. We leave skid marks. I, no. You. I don't leave skid marks. I just Yes, I think I I do think it's a quite a good name and it suits us mm. as people and as a and as a partnership. Yeah. So welcome to the Skid Marks well, podcast. Well, 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 um, skid Marks. Yeah. So on the topic of Skid Marks. Okay. What would you do if you're on like your first time ever spending? time with a new girlfriend and she has covered the toilet seat and the floor and the toilet bowl <laughs> the and floor. <laughs> the floor. she's a very messy pooper <laughs> what, so, so, <laughs> so has she had she been is this just a one-time thing and she's had something bad to eat or is this like <laughs> continuing <coughs> And every time she shits, she just shits all over the floor. Would you still date her if she's absolutely perfect, except her toilet health? I think hygiene is in the top three most important things for me when dating what a person. What, what are your other two? My other two... Big Batty. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Big Batty. And um, she kind of have had sex with more than zero guys. So. It has to be virgin. It has to be. No, that's actually not. Alright, can we cut that? It has to be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> what a skid remark. <laughs> <laughs> so, this girl that you're on the first date. Okay. You want to know how she got shit everywhere. Yep. She took skid marks to the to a level. Okay. You know those tiny little cars mm -hmm. that have little tiny little batteries that you yep. can move. She sits on one, her ass is over the thing, she's shitting while doing donuts in the car okay. in the bathroom. And it goes it just goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. Oh, you know, it's hard because she could have eaten something and it could be a one-time thing, but if she's like this every time, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, but it is going to have to be a pass for me. Mm. Would you rather eat shit-flavoured ice cream or ice cream-flavoured shit? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it is. I think I'd go shit flavoured ice cream. You would? Yeah. Why? Because although you're probably going to throw up in gag, you're not actually eating shit. So the like health effects aren't detrimental. No. But eating ice cream flavoured shit, mm. you could eat all of it. You could? Yes, you could eat all of it, but you could also get poisoned. Mmm. I, I would agree with you. Yeah. But, but you have it, yeah. What about like a spoonful? So not enough to actually like damage you in any way. A teaspoon. I'm I'm still sticking with you. You have to I'm I'm sticking with shit flavoured ice cream. Oh. I'm not, I would not eat shit no matter what it was flavoured. Mmm. Yeah. Back back to the topic of, of girls and stuff though. Yeah. I think my the three qualities that I look for with a girl is number one would ha have to be I, I like it when a girl like, actually gets me and understands yeah. that when I have when I urges. Ha no. They can't. <laughs> no, I'll let you finish. <laughs> I want them to understand that. I have my own life outside of a relationship. Yep. 
and I want to be able to do things for myself that's maybe not with the person in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So number one, respectful and understanding. Yes. Uh, that's, no. what, that's, sorry, that's a good top. Um, good qualities in anyone. Yeah. Um, number two, I think, would have to... People people really do say, like, looks don't matter and stuff, but they do. I, I think they do. And I yeah. think you cannot date someone, no matter how perfect they are personally, mm -hmm. if you're not physically attracted to them that in is, some way. That is a big point. And you would, the difference between someone you're not physically attracted to and someone you are is that one's a friend. Yeah. And one's someone you're interested in. That's right. Having a relationship with. And number three would have to be hygiene. I like a girl who knows how to wash herself and clean herself. And is it doesn't smell. I like smells are very important. Smells are a good, a very good thing. <laughs> what about shaving? Do you care about body hair? No. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not expected to shave as a man, so I don't see why mm. my girlfriend should have to shave herself. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal to me. Yeah. Me, um, <laughs> I always think keeping it tame is always respectful. Mm -hmm. um, down in the uh, lower dimensions of the human body, I think it's always nice to trim, mm -hmm. not necessarily clean shaven. Um, this might be something that's been mentioned. I always think that it's something I have never met a girl who doesn't do this, but shave their armpits. It's probably the one place that I, I couldn't care about arm hair, leg hair, mm -hmm. pussy hair, <laughs> mustache. I don't know about that one because yeah, I, don't I don't know if that would link into. <laughs> if you can think of mustache makes a man attractive or a le less attractive. Same goes for women. But yeah. armpit hair would be the one thing I would might be a little, a little bit turned off by, and that's a bit unfair. But it's just kind of <laughs> society, and I'm a part of society. Yeah. Would you rather your girlfriend with bushy pits or a clean shaven? Yeah. Pits. The a big thing about armpit hair is it actually like. Um, adds to the body odor and sweat and stuff. Mm. So I think. Am I getting cool? Very cool for mum. Look at that. Mum's mm. calling me. I oh, think yeah. we head back to my house. Okay. Uh, I think. Looks like we're, we've hit the the 40, 40 something mark. Yeah. And some good chats. Yeah. Let me look to see if there's any more. Any more things that we have down for today's talk. I think I'd prefer clean shaven pits, but at the end of the day, it's not a big issue. Mm. <coughs> I would like to play a song for us. All right. All right. Yeah, how how do I do that? <coughs> Go to my settings, Bluetooth, then C57. C57. Settings. Bluetooth. C57. Paired. Paired. Now, this is a very nice piece. Um, this is my song of the week. Yeah. It is done by someone you may know. Uh, he's been around for a very long time. Yeah, uh, what, what's his name? Well, I know, or I'll, I'll his try, name? I'll try and guess the... Yes, all right. Now, where is the audio? Your mum sleeps with so many men. <laughs> Sorry, just a uh, just a slag. Out just the just a slag on the side of the street. Let's listen. Does this turn up? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. I've been getting into classical music. Yeah. I have a um, a piece that I play that's called. Cool. Ha ha ha!
<laughs> if you wondered just then why there was a big beep, um, Jack said something awful <laughs> and very homophobic. Um, we do not condone behavior like this on the Skid Marks podcast. No. Um, Under no circumstances. His indicator keeps going. Where? where? He's. Where's old mate going? Where's old mate going? Oh, that's a line-up right there behind me. Everyone's pulling up, pulling up to my house. Yeah. This has been the, the very first episode of Skid Marks. It has. It has been quite a success. Yeah, it's been fun. We've, I liked we've, it. We've talked some, about some good things. We've eaten some, eaten some, some bad food. things. Talking so. about some bad things. Um, but overall, I think it was a good success. Yeah, it was fun. Good time, good length. Yeah. And yeah. if you're at, if you're watching this, make sure to subscribe. Um, we'll be on Spotify in two years. Yeah. Uh, top, probably TikTok. Probably, there might be some TikTok clips at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, our mission is to last about three months without getting cancelled. At least three months. That's without cool. getting cancelled. Remember, any holes the goal, guys. That's uh, so. That's my saying for this week.